Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Going Ballistic Podcast. I'm your co-host, I guess, at this point, Ryan Kleckner. And guess who's still with us? Jason, say hello to everybody, please. Hello, everybody. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Man, you've been busy, haven't you? Oh, man, we're so busy. It, it is incredible. I mean, my for those who don't know, I, I do granite countertops, engineered stone. Um, we have a fairly big shop, and right now I am so overloaded with stone, I don't even have any place to put it. I mean, we've, we've got to be doing a couple hundred slabs in process right now. It is insane. Wow, is housing just growing that much out there? No, commercial. All big commercial stuff. Mm, 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 gotcha. Well, I've been busy too, man. Unfortunately, we're too busy that we're not shooting enough. That's the I problem know. is you get involved in the firearms industry or gun stuff too much, you actually get to shoot less. It's kind of weird that way. Um, I asked you guys to reach out to say hi to Jackie uh, last time, and you guys, a lot of you guys have. It's awesome. I think it's made her day. Uh, a poor girl is buried in what I've what I have going on. Uh, we actually joked today as she was explaining oh my gosh then the email's here then this there then this there and this business that way i said yeah now now i understand why i was failing on my own because that's that was the biggest problem i had on my own is just i felt buried and i felt bad that i was leaving everyone hanging for stuff and i still am but we're getting up to our operating speed and although i'm still not done with my next book or i'm still not done with the atf compliance course i'm starting to get closer because now things are rolling so she's doing great um, and speaking of which, I'm getting things in for the store now. So I just got a case of trigger tech triggers in. I posted about it last night and I woke up and all of one kind of trigger are already gone from people just placing orders overnight. So you guys are buying the trigger tech triggers. That's awesome. I actually went ahead after seeing that and ordered another, uh, 50 or so triggers this morning from trigger tech. And they, they take a while to come in because we got to import them, but. Uh, we'll, we'll get them in soon and we'll get them up on the website. So I appreciate it. Hey, everyone's starting to join in the chat. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey, Richard, Casey, red leg. Good to see you guys. Now on the trigger tech triggers, still limited to the model 700s. It looked like in your post, you had a bunch of 700 triggers. I'm yeah. I mean, you have some air platform triggers too. No, I don't. I actually, I have some, I never thought about selling them. I had them for building my, my own rifles. <laughs> I have like, hmm. 10 or 12 Geisley triggers. Uh, I need to try the Trigger Tech AR triggers again. Uh, I have a lot of people asking about them, and they make such a phenomenal product. I can only imagine their AR triggers would be just as good, but I've played with them a little bit, and although they're an amazing trigger, it's the type of feel that I think is best suited for a bolt gun, for a precision rifle. For an AR, whether it's because it's the way it recoils, the way the gun operates, I really like the two-stage Geisley still. That's for me. <laughs> Casey says it's because you hate people that shoot savages like himself. Yep, I'm trying I'm trying to weed, weed you guys out. People are asking right. for left-handed triggers too, and I'm like, no, no, sorry. <laughs> We're going to do it. That's, now, see, I enjoyed shooting my buddy's Trigger Tech AR trigger. I really liked it a lot. And do you want to get some in for you? I'm actually looking forward to swapping a couple of mine out with it. Really? And All right. Yeah. Well, let me know if you want me to snag some. Is there, there's an adjustable one and things like that. I can throw some in the store if you guys like them for sure. We can do that. So, yeah. Uh, Snakebite asked me if I'm going to the NRA. Uh, I was until yesterday. Um, uh, I, was, I was signed up uh, with a manufacturer to uh, do some book signings. And then things got changed because of taxes for Texas, you know, because people wanting to collect them there. And then some other, uh, I think, internal things happened. And so I started making up deals with other manufacturers. And then we were kind of scrambling a little bit on, well, what days and times and this and that. And I started reaching out to a few of my close friends in the industry, you know, making sure I get a chance to link up with them. And they weren't going at all to the show. And then once that kind of happened with the show, I'm like, you know what? I'm still so buried. All I'm going to do is have to deal with y'all asking me when the next book is going to be done. <laughs> and I should just be home writing it instead of going. So actually yesterday I canceled my Delta flight and ate like a $260 change fee. And so sorry guys, I was going to go to NRA. I thought it'd be a great chance to walk around, shake everybody's hand. But once we had scheduling problems, not only with the books, but with the booths, uh, things like that. And then I saw that the NRA um, seminar for legal stuff didn't count as uh, continuing legal education credits for Connecticut, which I needed. Just long list of stuff. I just looked at it and like, you know what? 
I'm going to get a lot of people mad at me, but I'm not going to go. I'm going to take some time to get some stuff done in the house and see my kids and do that. So sorry, guys. I won't be at the NRA show. And the other side of it is I'm not exactly excited about the NRA right now. I know that's not what it's about. It would have been a great chance to see you all. Um, and actually, as I'm talking through it right now, the reason I'm rambling is I'm kind of regretting it. Like, oh, no, I had a great chance. I could have met you all. Um, maybe next time. But the NRA is kind of doing some weird stuff now, Jason. Did you hear about the Yeti issue? I seen the videos. I haven't got <laughs> in depth in it, but the the videos are hilarious. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of taken off like a wildfire, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you have any thoughts on that? Because I I, I kind of do, and I don't think they're the mainstream thoughts that everyone else has. I don't know if I'd have shot an eight hundred dollar cooler. I think I would have sold it. <laughs> and got my money back before I put a bunch of bullets in it. Yeah. I get the point. I understand it completely. Um, but I mean, I I like my Cabela coolers better than Yeti anyway. So, well, uh, I want you guys to tell me, including you, Jason. But guys in the comments, uh, write in, let me know. Um, do you really think Yeti did something bad here? Now, hold on before you guys attack me. This is the safe space, right? This is supposed to be a safe space. Um. I'm not exactly sure that Yeti did something wrong or did anything anti-gun. Uh, Marion Hammer is not a friend of mine, and she is not a friend of guys that think like me. The the I, I hesitate to say younger because I'm getting older, but my generation of gun guys that are coming up, uh, she's kind of in the category of gun owners that I would consider a FUD. You ever heard of that term FUD before, of like an older gun owner? No. So a FUD is typically meant to say if it doesn't have a wood stock on it, it's not a gun. Um, which trust me, I think guns with wood stocks are gorgeous. But FUDs are also ones that are easy to say, uh, well, you don't need air fifteens for hunting, so I don't know why you need air fifteens anyway. But uh, you know, not my hunting rifles. And so it's like Elmer FUD is kind of what it's named. Like they're just the old hunter walking around, that's all they think they care about. And so they're they're a little um flaky on Second Amendment rights. They're the ones that are willing to give up high capacity magazines and things like that. And I think she's a FUD. I mean, we were trying to get uh, Tim Knight and Adam Kraut onto the NRA board to get some fresh blood in there because I think she hasn't shown up to the last eight board meetings. So I think it's like four years or five years or something. She just doesn't even show up as a board member. And she actually, she was so scared of these guys coming on because the younger blood, I think Adam Kraut's maybe my age, maybe a little younger than me one of his campaign promises to get on the board was to make people have attendance records and then you have to show up to stay on the board. So it threatened people, some people like her that make tons of money to not do anything. And so since she was threatened with it, she came out with a uh, kind of a hit piece and said that Adam Kraut was the enemy within and we need to do everything we can to stop these kind of people from taking over the NRA. Well, they're kind of like me, pro NFA stuff, not pro NFA, the laws, but pro NFA style firearms, AR 15s, you know, stuff like that. It's it kind of divided the industry a little bit. And I think she stepped on it. Now, she's a very powerful dynasty in the NRA, but she's the last generations or so. Well, that was her. And that's, that is her. And this whole Yeti thing came just from her. So she put out a press release trying to get everyone excited, and the NRA is good at that, getting out there and just getting people riled up, that said, Yeti's pulling back, and they're not supporting the Second Amendment, this and that. But from my casual research, so again, you guys correct me here, Yeti sent that letter to a lot of different companies at the exact same time. They said they're reevaluating their deals and programs, and that they're going to start fresh. So they used to have all these older programs out there, which would offer certain discounts and offer certain promotions and things like that. And they just came out and said, Hey, we're redoing our whole program. So all of our old deals, Hey, we're cutting those starting fresh. You guys can still get stuff at discount. We can do stuff like that. Um, precision rifle network is chiming in here. First off, that's kind of cool guys. We got the precision rifle network on the live chat. Thanks for, thanks for showing up and, uh, and being a part of this. Uh, looks like some people are saying, no, I don't think Yeti did anything wrong. They decided not to donate to an NRA program and they're bad. I don't have a problem with that. I don't either. 
Um, I actually kind of have a problem with how everyone piled on him so fast. Uh, guys, I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to say something that I shouldn't have said or that maybe uh, I didn't mean to say. It was an accident. Or maybe I did mean to say it, and I was just um, ignorant. And I needed some help for my friends to see the light because I didn't, I didn't see it the right way. I need you guys to come to me and say, Hey man, I heard you say X, but really you should think about why. And this is why that's what I need from you all. What I don't need from you all. If I make a mistake like that is to pile on me and just boycott me. If I make that mistake, I'm not saying any mistake. I'm just saying I, I'm a little nervous about what we're doing to ourselves here. And I'm a little questionable about who's winning this war here. The left is going to be sitting like laughing as we eat ourselves over these things. So Yeti just said, hey, new marketing program, old marketing program gone. Marion Hammer, who as far as I'm concerned, is no friend to gun owners and my generation and our type of shooters. Um, I mean, she and those group are the ones that say, yes, we should ban bump stocks. They're the ones that came out in the NRA and said that bump stocks should be banned. Uh, I don't get it. So I, I, Sean Heron actually of the firearms radio network was the first one that called me on it. Cause I saw that Arctic posted the second amendment and their social media. And I, I, I copied it and said, well played Arctic, not making any comment that he was bad. It was just well played that Arctic had the timing to put that out there to get people excited. And I saw a post, a video from Sean Heron bringing up everything I'm bringing up now, which was saying, Hey guys, Marion Hammer is not our friend. Why all of a sudden are we listening to her? She's just doing this to get people riled up. And as far as I can tell, that's what happened. And I see Yeti's statement. I see them say, we still love the second amendment. We still love hunting. We still support hunting and shooters and all that kind of stuff. And outdoorsmen and the things on their website. I mean, heck there at shot show. I have a free Yeti mug that I never would have purchased. Cause I don't get why you would pay that much for a mug. Uh, Yeti gave me a free mug at SHOT Show. They gave everyone out there at the Media Day at the Range a free mug because they support firearms in the SHOT Show. So I actually think this is the NRA is way off track, and I think they're hurting us, and this is just one way they're doing it. Um, Jason, did I lose you? No, no, no. All right. Well, you're frozen on the screen over here. Okay, good. <laughs> um, what do you think about that, Jason? Well... I agree with you, but also from a business standpoint, as a business owner, whether you were into guns or not, that was probably one of the worst avenues to go down as a marketing ploy. I mean, because for Yeti coolers, I would have to guess that 75% or better are by people who own guns. So yeah, why, maybe, why, yeah. would you, why would you tie yourself to something like that? In any way, shape, or form. Tie yourself to the NRA, you mean to stopping yes. that program? Yeah, stopping the program or somebody making a statement in that regard to where it reflects your yeah. company. See what you're saying? I mean, but I'm, I mean, I'm a gun guy, right? If I were, I'm not, but if Rocket FFL were paying money to the NRA, I would have seriously considered stopping by now. That's how much I think the NRA is um, not advocating for us, and I actually think they're hurting us. Right. It is um, I've, I, I've, I've, I've never been quoted as being a big fan of the NRA uh, publicly. I think that's the first time I've said that, and I, I hope I don't get in too much trouble here for speaking about this publicly, but in any other conversations, I've always said that. Just I'm not an NRA guy, and that's kind of how I introduce myself when I meet people or my new neighbors or stuff like that. They're like, oh, you're a gun guy. I'm like, yep, not an NRA guy, but a big gun guy. You know, and this is what I think the difference is. You know, I'm not going to run around and scream uh, that the world is ending when it's not, but I am going to run around and scream that the world is ending when it is. Um, so, yeah, just, I don't know, Jason, what do you think about that? Like, I would I would be backing away probably myself, too. But. I would, I would hope that people wouldn't say that was because I was anti-gun. Maybe what you're saying is it just isn't smart how they handled it. Yeah, I don't think it was smart at all. Uh, if anything, they should have came right out of the way and said, whoa, this is a mistake, uh, and tried to, you know, fix the problem before it just ran amok. I mean, this has been going on for, what, two weeks now is when this kind of all started? Yeah. Uh, I don't know when it first started for Yeti to the NRA, but I remember when I first heard about it was when the NRA 
was the one that made the stink about it. And then Yeti, as far as I know, came right back with their public statement said, NRA is making this up. Uh, yes, we stopped that program. We're starting a new program with them. They still get discounts on stuff. We still love shooting. We still love hunting. We still love firearms. Don't know what you're talking about. See, I never says, heard any of that. Oh, yeah. Yeti came right out and they're like, nope, not it at all. We love the Second Amendment. The NRA is lying here. They're just trying to get a bunch of votes or a bunch of interest, not votes, you know, getting people riled up about stuff. That's even, and that's sure enough, I'm like, part. man, my buddy Sean Heron was maybe right. He's He was the first one I saw go on. Everybody stop for a second. This isn't even the NRA proper. This is one lady and her email list in Florida. You know, I just don't know. Yeah, and that's the worst part too. I mean, when when you when you hear stuff like that, whether it's on the news or anything else, you almost have to take it secondhand until you research it because you don't know the whole story. Yes, really and that that right there is a case in point of I don't think maybe all the people in the NRA have our best interests at heart because look what they just did to an entire company and to an industry. That doesn't sound like a very good advocate to me. I don't know. And then is is the answer? This is a question. I'll ask you, Jason, is, is the solution, what, should the advocates of our industry be educating people and questioning people and maybe, you know, holding them to task or should they be riling up the peasants with pitchforks, you know? No, no, it should be definitely educating and getting the support that you need to move forward. Um, that was kind of the whole purpose of the NRA, you know, was, hey, we're here to yeah. stand up for you against, you know, politicians and anything else, you know, to protect your rights, help, you know, help us help you type thing. Well, cause do you know, there's a lot longer list of organizations and companies that don't give to the NRA than the other way around. Right. Right. So we're going to punish Yeti. First off, let's say Yeti did decide to stop it completely because they didn't like the NRA. Okay. Kind of can't blame them depending on where they're coming from. Um, but are they worse because they did it at least for a few years before they stopped? Versus other companies that just won't do it at all? I don't know. It, it bothered yeah. me a little bit. But then, so the next thing is Tim Kennedy. Some people brought that up in the comments for it. I think Tim Kennedy was wrong for his statements. He was, I think what he said was, I shouldn't say wrong. Let me completely take that back. I disagree with him. So he wasn't wrong. I just disagree with him. I don't think that you should have, that 19 year old shouldn't have AR-15s which is what he said. He was on a podcast with uh, Lance Armstrong and Tim Kennedy's a former Ranger, former SF guy, uh, MMA fighter. As far as I can tell, pretty awesome dude from the stuff that he's doing in his life. Um, I, I think some people may have heard some people say that they don't like how he comes across, but I don't know how I'd come across if I was like a pro MMA fighter. <laughs> <laughs> did all this other stuff i might come across with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder too so i don't know for sure i don't know don't know him personally uh he does a lot of cool stuff a lot of promotional videos he's with 511 things like that so he said on the podcast that he didn't think that 19 year olds should be able to have access to air 15s again i disagree with him so but I instead of the industry coming out and saying hey man let me pull you aside let me set you straight everyone just turned on them. You know, if, if you're trying to keep people aligned with your views and beliefs and you're out with a group of friends and you're all sitting around a campfire drinking beers and one of your buddies says something horrible about the military and it's untrue or it's a bad statement and you want to be pro military and he says something wrong. I, I hate to use that word cause it's an opinion, but so he says his opinion which you don't agree with. I would expect a friend of mine or me to a friend to pull him aside later and be like, hey man, I, I, I heard you say this. Just so you know, this is where I'm coming from and this is why. And you know, to hey Tim, 19 year olds not be able to have AR 15s. Well, when are you going to draw the line? They're an adult or they're not, or they can join the military and why not? And you know, debate them and correct him. And then guess what? Have another Yeti or a Tim Kennedy be your biggest advocate. Go out there and talk about how great the Second Amendment is and be educated. But instead, everybody, again, just a knee-jerk reaction, just unloaded on him. Maybe he deserves it. I'm, I'm completely speaking out of ignorance here, guys. I'm just, I guess, wondering, wondering aloud, Jason. What do you think? Oh, I, I'm with you on, on the age 
19 year old, 20 year old, 18 year old. I mean, the military should be the strongest argument with that. If you're old enough to go in the military and die for your country and they're giving you guns to use, you should be able to own one. I mean, that, right, that let is- me play devil's advocate though. What about beer? So should an 18 year old be able to drink beer? If they're in the military or not in the military, uh, no, I don't think they should. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Because they, if we're going to try, again, everyone, if you're just listening to a clip of this, taken out of context, it's not really what I believe. I'm playing devil's advocate. Right. Uh, so why, why can't, why do you think a 18 year old should not be able to drink, not even just beer, alcohol? Because it, um, it actually changes the mental status of the individual to, depending on how much they consume. Okay. So, but what I imagine before it changes the mental status, what most people say, what you might be saying is there is a assumed at that age, they don't, we don't trust them to make the right decision with alcohol. Not only that, I, it's not that they can't make the right decision with alcohol. If you're out having a good time and you're drinking too much alcohol, now you're making dumb decisions. And you're doing it without even really knowing. Whereas when you're sober and on a rifle, the rifle shouldn't change your views. I mean, you should have oh, been brought up or, you know I, what I'm saying? I agree with you. I'm just, what I'm getting at is I'm trying to trap you. I'm not doing very well. Is <laughs> if you, do you have the mental capacity and clarity to make adult proper decisions at 18 or not? And most people say, no, you need to wait till you're 21 because 18 year olds are stupid and make bad decisions. Yeah, or so they, they'll go out and, exactly. So they're like at 18, they'll go out and they'll drink too much and get into trouble, which is kind of what you're saying. Or at 18, they don't know any better. They can't control themselves. Or at 18, we can't trust them to not just go get drunk all the time and abuse alcohol, which is where I'll say the devil's advocate side say, well, wait a minute. If they don't have the capacity to make good decisions until they're 21, or people say, well, their brain hasn't matured, which is true. The frontal cortex hasn't fully developed until 21, so they can't make certain decisions properly. That's kind of true. Well, then if that's true, then maybe it should be 21. Right. I'm not saying it should. I'm just asking. It's, 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 it's hard to argue you should be able to join the military and defend your country and make this very adult decision, but we do not trust you enough to be able to have alcohol. And I guess the only way I can arg- say I believe in that is the argument that it metabolizes different in your body, maybe. Right. Maybe. I don't know. But so I think 18 year olds should be able to have firearms. Absolutely. Here's the problem I have is if you're 18, you can now legally be out on your own. That's where I look at. I look at it like defending your home. So if you are 18 and can be out on your own and don't have dad there with a gun to protect you, you need to be able to have a firearm to protect yourself. That's my argument. And if you can't have until 21, well then you shouldn't be able to kick someone out till they're 21 because in that gap, you are now making them defenseless. You're making them where they cannot defend themselves in their homes. And I like to bring up, you know, the easiest argument ever is a spouse of a military member. Military members deployed, spouse is home by herself with a couple of kids. She can't have a firearm to defend herself? Of course she should be able to. So right. anyway. Yep, yep. So Casey in the comments said, uh, Ryan, he's doubling down all over Instagram fighting anyone trying to debate him. He isn't interested in conversation. Well, okay, then that's that's wrong. I'll finally say the, I'll stick with the word wrong on that one. You got to be open to conversation. Um, yeah, not a smart comment, but man, it seriously makes me nervous when everyone, like all the all the peasants with the pitchforks are going after the evil monster. It's like, oh crap. What, what's it going to be like when it happens to me someday? Hmm. Did you catch um, any of the information where Ohio is trying to pass a law where teachers can now carry and they're going to have to take courses and using the firearm every few weeks and working through all the quirks of that right now? I think that's fantastic. I I, I think gun-free zones are dangerous. So I, I think it's it's kind of weird that we have to come up with a law that allows someone to exercise a constitutional right. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Because if it wasn't see. for the a law, it wouldn't have been taken away in the first place. Right. But, but I am excited to see somebody yeah. pushing that direction. I, I yeah. would really like to see that. That happen. is awesome. The training makes me a little nervous, so I like it. Um 
I like the idea of training because I don't want a bunch of idiots out there with guns, but at the same time, I don't like training requirements because the whole concept of the Second Amendment is to potentially overthrow a tyrannical government. And when the government gets to decide the training requirement, that's a de facto gun ban, like it was in Chicago for a while. You could have a Chicago CCW. You just had to qualify at a gun range within the city limits. And there were no gun ranges allowed in city limits. So Chicago said, what? We allow for CCW. We're not infringing anyone's Second Amendment rights. But since they were able to set the requirements so high, it was impossible to get. So that makes me nervous a little bit. Um, there you go. People are bringing up great points. LaPierre, you know, the head of the NRA is calling for gun free schools in the nineties on stage. You know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of problems. So I think it's great, Jason, to answer your question. Um, I think school safety is important. That's why I'm doing Mayday safety, uh, which by the way, I think we'll be ready for the public in two weeks. Nice. We'll see. I think it'll be in the app store by May 15th. And I know that the pro and the dashboard versions are working. And I was actually working on the website tonight, getting it ready for pricing and things like that. So yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting to try this thing out. Well, I got to get Android next. So I have iPhone and then the pro version. The pro version is like the desktop or accessible from any browser. And then we're starting the Android version right now. We just did iPhone first to try and get it going. But yeah, man, a couple of weeks, we're going to have schools uh, on the system and going. And we've gone back and forth on how we're charging for this or that or not, or who's going to get what for free, just trying to make the business model make sense. And we're pretty excited how it's going to work out. Um, people are bringing up, Jason, another comment. Vista Outdoors is saying they'll no longer sell firearms. Have you heard about that? I have. Vista stock went down like 13.5% today. So <laughs> I heard uh, that too. I day trade a little bit sometimes. I don't have much time to do it anymore. And I will jump in and out of gun stocks, depending on what's going on. Like I'll, I'll hear something happen in politics and I'll jump over to my phone and like boop, 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 buy some Ruger, buy some Vista, you know, and, and <laughs> just to see what happens or orbital ATK, things like that. And then make some money for a few days and jump back out. Nothing that is material insider information, public information. <laughs> and so when this happened, I was like, oh no, I can't remember if I own Vista or not. And I dove at my phone and it was already down 14% of the stock and I wasn't invested in it. So I was very happy I wasn't invested in it. So that's another one, uh, JLN 370 who brought that up is I don't see necessarily that they're, I mean, they are saying you are right. Your, your comment is correct. Vista Outdoors is saying they no longer sell firearms. What I don't agree with is all the headlines I've been seeing about uh, like I think the Hill had one, which was surprising that they were so political or biased in their headline. It said, uh, major gun manufacturer decides to stop making firearms after Florida shooting. It's like, that was factually true. You know, after Florida shooting, which is today. So anything that happens today is after the Florida shooting. <laughs> so after the Florida shooting, right. gun manufacturer Vista decides to stop making guns. Yep. But if you read their press release, they're stopping a ton of brands. They're like, I think they listed like seven brands of major programs that they're looking to sell and restructure the way the company's going. So they're anti-gun just as much as they're anti-helmet or whatever else they have. You know, uh, Brent Woodlich said the 18 year old soldier is trained to use a weapon. He's not trained to drink. You are wrong, sir. 18 year old <laughs> soldiers are possibly trained to drink more than they're trained to use a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> um, just kidding. Of course. Um, yeah. So Vista is stopping or they want to stop or sell some stuff. I think it's a restructuring deal. I think it's another, everyone's getting all riled up to get upset about things. I even think they're still making ammo. So I don't think they're getting out of like the gun industry. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I'm still waiting to see. I think it was Dick's sporting good who said they were going to destroy all their guns that they couldn't get rid of. I know. Isn't that crazy? I'm waiting to see that big fire of guns, you know, big pallet burning thing outside. Where well, I hope they do it like I expect they're going to do it, which is by cutting all the barrels off first and making illegal short barreled rifles. Oh, that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or destroy them. Great. That's great for the industry, guys. Guys, that's huge for the firearms industry. If Dix destroys all those guns, that means the money was already paid to all the manufacturers. Yep. And that means manufacturers need to make a bunch more rifles to get back out there on the market for people to get them. That's awesome for the industry. Please, Dix, destroy as many guns that's as right. you possibly can. 
because that only helps the farms industry and it only hurts dicks. Yep. You bought them. Do what you want with them. Yeah. Knock yourself out. So I uh, started organizing my garage. Jackie actually helped me with that. We're like stressed in the day. Like there's a plant. You see a plant? That's from Jackie. So Jackie told me I had to get a plant in here. So there's a plant. Ah. Um, uh, so she's helping me organize some stuff. And so we went down. She's like, what is this? What is this? We're pulling out boxes of things. I'm like, oh, that's a night vision scope. Oh, that's a whatever. Just stuff I don't want or don't need or have like at all. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start giving them away. So not this podcast, but uh, I'll start getting some cool stuff just to give away. I have one of those uh, Silencer Co. Radius range finders. You know what I'm talking about? Those rifle mounted range finders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one of those brand new in the box. I'll give it away just for fun. Um, unless you want it, Jason. Do you want it? Uh, I have a couple range finders. I don't know if I would actually use it. I think it would be right. better to give it to the listeners. All right. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. So if anyone out there has great ideas on how to do giveaways, because I don't want to just give it away to people that are listening live, because... I mean, that's cool. I'm glad you guys are here, but I don't want to, you know, penalize people that aren't able to make it this time of night. And then I want to get something out of it. I mean, I can't make you buy it. That's not legal, you know, raffle tickets or anything, but, you know, sign up for an email or do something. So if you guys got any good ideas, let me know. I'll figure something out. What you need to do is make a, uh, uh, like a little treasure map of gun questions and see who can get to it first and like 10 points on the map. Something that has to actually hit geography wise and then see who can get to the answer first. Ooh. Yeah, I should do it like ready player one. I should hide Easter eggs and see who yeah. can figure it out. All right, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do uh a red legs as drinking contest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I will yeah, or I'll get people to listen to the podcast, you know, and subscribe. Maybe I'll just put those silly giveaways where they put like code words on the podcast or stuff like that. Oh yeah. Or live or I don't know. I'll figure something else. If you guys have any good ideas, let me know and I'll figure something out. So I think now if you're going to get rid of like scopes or something like that, then yeah, definitely let me know and I'll definitely see what you're, you're throwing away there. All right. Yeah. I'll let you know first. I'll give you dibs and I'll do it on the air so everyone can get mad at you. <laughs> so well, all I right, guys. I haven't got a, a gift package from Vortex yet, so. Vortex I'm not giving any of that away. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, let's see. Any cool guns behind me? No. Oh, I got to admit, I went back to shooting a Glock. I've been yeah. so long from shooting a Glock. <laughs> well, I'm just saying not like switched over to it completely. I just, I've been shooting that CZ for so long and shooting the 320s for so long. I mean, shooting tons out of that 320. And finally went back to the Glock and I'm like, oh, honey, why did I ever leave you? <laughs> I, mean, I kid you not man the glock 19 was just like this just makes sense i'm just so used to it i'm used to firing it i'm used to the trigger i'm used to everything and it just makes me laugh how i don't know if you guys do that but i'll do that sometimes i'll, I'll go off on a path and tangent and it's kind of like how we evolve as gun people like i started out as like 1911s only or like hks only and then i go like oh 1911s forget those they're never gonna work and i just you kind of go through this evolution as a gun owner so I kind of did that. I strayed away, and now I'm I'm kind of coming back. Uh, I need to go out and spend some more time on the range with it and see if if I'm all messed up now from shooting so much with another gun. So we'll see. So hey, did you ever get the air rifle? You got an air rifle. What brand did you get? The air rifle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the. Dude, I'm horrible with names. I, I have not touched a gun or anything. I haven't even touched that air rifle in probably four months. Well, Alice, my daughter, uh, started shooting the air rifle with me. And like, she thinks it's the coolest thing ever and she's great at it. Um, she was actually, believe it or not, while Jackie and I were working on organizing stuff, she came over and I was helping Alice and Alice is pinging, you know, Coke cans in the backyard with it, realizing, wow, she's got like an aptitude to this. This is really kind of cool. like, she's really good. Um, I need to get her one because mine, the length of pull is way too long and it's way too old. I think I've had this this air rifle since 99 98 and it's done well it's a brake barrel it's you know it's nice but i'm just looking for a better one and maybe you guys can let me know in your comments let me know should i be getting a spring or a gas piston because right now i still like the brake barrel style 
because it's so easy to deal with and it's easy to tell that it's not able to shoot so when you have the barrel broken open it's easy to tell you know it's not i mean you still treat it like a like it was a firearm even though it's not but it's nice to see and i love iron sights i do not want to scope on a pellet gun i think it's way too fun to shoot with iron sights and i'm looking at some of these medium to higher end ones and even some of the higher end ones jason that are like the made in germany rws nice guns are spring and I guess because they're saying you can get more reliability out of the spring, but then it seems like all the new technology is the gas piston. So guys, I'm going into a world of which I am not aware. So if there's air, air rifle people out there that can point me in the right direction, let me know. So the one I ended up getting, because it always takes a minute to remember what I'm buying because I have crap everywhere, um, is the Swiss Arms TG1. And I think I had told you about it before and you looked it up. It's It's got the whole tactical scout rifle look to it. It almost looks like an AR-15 brake barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it shoots Swiss good, Arms TG1, that's what you got? Yep, it was like 99 bucks. But see, that's where you and I differ. I like shooting a scope on the pellet rifle and not iron sights. What? Really? Yep. And that's why I don't like brake barrels. Although, this one's shooting fairly decent, but I mean... We're we're plinking out in the field next to the house, you know, at about forty yards. And so it's accurate. Uh, it's accurate enough, I'd say, within a racquetball. I wouldn't call it super accurate. Well, the one I have was like a the equivalent of an eighty dollar wood stocked, you know, brake barrel, and it's been crazy accurate. It's been, I mean, it's been good. It's all. It's all I need, but hmm. because you're shooting iron sights, though, so yeah. the barrel the barrel stays with the iron sights. When you're shooting a scope, that barrel deviates ever so little bit, and you're always going to be off a little bit. And that's why I want to get Man, it. Does scope. not have a brake barrel. Yeah, to me. So for those of you guys out there, for me, like I like the training of shooting. I love iron sights. You guys should know that about me by now. One of the reasons I love them is one, they're more challenging, but two, they instill such a focus on fundamentals. So to plink with the air rifle, it's like easy practice in the backyard on shooting accurately. And I don't know. I guess the same argument could be said, Jason, that having a scope is good practice because it's practice for using a scope, right? Well, and that was the whole purpose. I mean, we're long range shooting. I'm not shooting iron sights. I'm shooting with a scope. So it's nice to catch myself, especially with the air rifle, because it's so easy to pull it out of alignment and see some of the mistakes that I'm making with it. Right, because you can see without the recoil, right? Slate is asking, uh, he knows I'm a Tika guy. Just recently bought a Tika T3 TAC A1. It was dry firing. I noticed that the bolt body next to the handle was getting chipped by the top edge of the receiver. Had to ship it back. I've ever seen anything like that. No, I have not. I'm glad you shipped it back, though. Let me know if they take care of you, or I guess if they don't. I'll call them up and say, do you know who I am? (laughs) They won't care. (laughs) Yeah, they won't care whatever (laughs) uh yes we do please stop calling sir uh (laughs) so anyway well i hope you guys enjoyed tonight uh thanks for putting up with jason and i just catching up with each other and we didn't talk about early gun stuff that much maybe we got a little politics in here but it's important and again everybody sorry i'm not going to the nra show um i do regret it a little bit but i think it'll be better next year when i actually have the next book ready and everyone will be happy with me so Anything else, Jason? No. As soon as I get caught up with work, uh, I still plan on getting with you and getting my long range 22 done. Uh, mm. We've talked about it a few times, but I've still not pulled the trigger on it. So uh, I don't know if I brought it up last time or if you asked, but I am going to go with the CZ Tactical. Um, it's the way to go, Start off there because uh, I enjoyed shooting the, the older model that I shot. had a different trigger in it, but uh, but I'm still really excited about that. Even though life gets in the way and I just haven't had time to fall through with it, but it's yeah. still in the plans. I still right. plan on doing well, it. Good. We'll, we'll track on that project going and everyone else appreciate all your comments. Appreciate you telling people about the podcast. Again, you want to thank Jason and I for giving up our time to share information with you guys or to talk about things or interact with you guys. Uh, you can do that by telling other people about the podcast, make sure you subscribe, please leave us some good reviews that helps other people find the podcast. And uh, tell other people about it because we get to see those downloads and that's how podcasts are measured is by how many times it gets downloaded. So that keeps going up, which it is. 
we keep doing them. So love, love, love you guys. Thanks for being a part of this. Uh, Bodhi asked about bullet energy. Oh man, we'll talk about that. I don't know what you mean, 208 Bodhi, but maybe we'll talk about bullet energy next podcast. Have a good night, Jason. All right, guys. Thanks.